So the 2012 Advanced Hire Applied Maths, the mechanics section first of all. Question 1. Motion in a circle. A car travels at a uniform speed of 80 kilometres per hour on a horizontal track of radius 150 metres. So here's its speed then of 80 kilometres per hour. Bit nasty with the units there. The radius is 150 without slipping. Calculate the coefficient of friction between the tyres and the track. Well, the first thing is, in order for this to deviate from its natural tendency to travel in a straight line, unless acted on by unbalanced forces, there must be a force acting in towards the centre, a centripetal force. Don't start annoying your physics teachers by saying centrifugal is away from the centre. There's no force away from the centre throwing it outwards. There has to be a force pulling it inwards or else it would travel in a straight line. So there's some unbalanced force then that makes it deviate from its path, pulling it radially in towards the centre, a centripetal force. And the only way that that can be provided is by the friction between the tyres and the track. Not the steering itself. The steering would do nothing. Move the steering about on a slippy surface, you just keep skating in the same direction. No, it's the tyres that are holding you in. And that's why the question said, what's the coefficient of friction? So what we've got here looking down at this car here. Then the forces acting on it are, there's the weight of the car, there's the reaction, the normal reaction at the surface, otherwise it would just sink in. Now those are balanced, that's why it stays on the surface, but there's a force pulling it inwards. And that has to be provided by the force of friction between the tyres, which depends on the normal reaction. Now, if a body travels in a circular path at a steady speed, there has to be a change in velocity, a change in direction, so there has to be an acceleration. And that acceleration is given by, using the speed form of it, v squared over r. Well, there's those two numbers in it, which means giving this car a mass of m, so the weight is mg, the force then that has to be provided by the friction will be ma, that'll be m times v squared upon r. What's going to provide that force? Well you could pull on it with a rope and have a tension in the rope, or it's the friction between the tyres and the surface, and that's what it is in this case, and what's the friction given by? It's given by the normal reaction times this coefficient. So that has to be equal to mu n, which of course is equal to mu mg. So there's the little equation then. mv squared upon r has to be equal to mu mg. And I think that, that was the, those were the first two marks out of the three arriving at this. Not sure if you needed to begin with, you know, stating the components of balanced forces in that vertically. Should have said that to begin with. Vertically. The sum of the vertical forces was zero. That's why it didn't move up and down. But the sum of the, now it seems to say the x forces, but really it should be the, the sum of the radial forces was unbalanced. And that's the one that's going to provide an acceleration towards the centre. So I'm not sure if they wanted that as part of the first marks or not. But anyway, after this, now it's just a case of rearranging that from mu. And notice, of course, the mass is irrelevant. That's going to cancel out. So the coefficient of friction will simply be v squared over rg. Now put in the numbers. Be careful to match the units. We're going to be using g here equal just to 9.8 metres. Per second. Yeah, this will have to match this then. So that 80 kilometres an hour, I'll have to say, well, we've got 80, that's kilometres. We'll have to multiply that by 10 to the 3. That'll make it metres per hour. But then we'll have to divide it by 60 to make it minutes and 60 again. So let's divide it by 60 squared. Maybe we'll just break that line there. So that was V. But I need to square the whole thing. And then it's times, I'll just put 1 over R, which is 150, and G, which is 9.8. And pressing in the buttons gives you 0 0.3359 and so on. 
two significant figures, mu is 0 0.34. And there you go, that starts the paper off with a nice wee three marks.